Hello and welcome to Cloud Force Vibes. My name is Bobby and this is how I grow orchids and carnivorous plants. Hello and welcome to Cloud Forest Vibes. Today's video is another care collab video. This time it's on Hariella Retrocala or Hariella Odorata as I know it. It goes by both names, uh, several names actually. It's one of those ones that's been renamed a few times, but most of you guys will know it as Hariella Retrocala. Hariella Retrocala is native to Taiwan and it grows cool to warm in deciduous forest at an altitude of 500 to 1500 meters. It's a miniature sized epiphytic species. It gets a height of about one to two inches with short kind of fleshy oblong leaves. The first one I had, I had it mounted upright and that was a huge mistake. It is a vandaceous type grower and if you get water in the crown, like most vandaceous types or monopodials, it will suffer and it will die pretty quickly. The bloom, as you see, I am lucky to have on here, comes from a spike that is what you call successively flowered. So it has one, it'll push another bud out behind that, another one out behind that. Um, usually I get three or four flowers off of a spike. Um, I think three actually is the most I've ever gotten. And I do have another spike coming. So it definitely is a floriferous little plant. The way I grow mine is now mounted pendulously. I have the orchid hanging upside down. Let's zoom out a little bit so you guys can see and it seems to do much better that way. I don't have to worry quite nearly as much about getting water in the crown and having this thing keel over. I do keep this thing pretty well fed and well watered in the growing season, but it does appreciate a dry out um, in the winter time. It does come from, again, a deciduous area. It likes to get cool, it likes to get dry, it likes to get bright. So in the winter time, this might only get misted once every two or three weeks with clean water, but it definitely gets some very, very bright light. As bright light as I can give it without giving it direct sun. I think that's a really, really key factor to growing these successfully. Again, they are from Taiwan, so they don't come from a tropical jungle. They come from an area that has high humidity. However, they do have seasonal changes there that you would expect for an area like Taiwan. It's a fragrant flower. It smells kind of like honey or citrus to me. Um, and I've heard some people really don't like this smell so I, I'm gonna say it's one that you kinda either love or you hate. It's got really awesome yellow coloration with this maroonish purple patterning on the lip and it is frilly if you look really close. I feed this plant just like I would feed most of my orchids around 150 parts per million of MSU fertilizer and I do supplement it with cow mag and kelp as well um, sporadically. Lots of flushing, all my orchids get lots of flushing with clean water religiously and it does seem to really enjoy new media. When this starts to go off, it's just a little teeny piece of moss. I will pull that off and I will replace it just like I'm starting to do with most of my miniatures that have the zombie moss still on the mounts. I live in the Washington DC area but I do grow indoors so my regional temperatures and regional stuff really is kind of irrelevant to this except for the fact that I do get seasonal changes in the sun so it does affect my light levels a little bit. Also with the temperatures I am able to have it warmer in the summer in here and cooler in the winter time though I do grow in a grow tent inside my house so I'm very much in control of the environment here. Having that said I grow this in intermediate conditions. My temperatures in the summertime go from about 66, 67 at night usually with a little bit of help from the AC up to about 81 or 82 during the daytime as a high. I never let it get past 82 or 83 in here because I have some cool growers that really, really suffer. So I'm trying to keep it around 80 or 81 this year. And so far, it's been really good for everything. Things aren't suffering and things aren't um, stalling at all. So, so far, so good with that. In the wintertime, I do, however, take this thing down to about 58 degrees at night. The whole tent gets down to about 58 degrees. And my daytime highs are only about 74, 75 degrees. So not a terribly significant change, but a significant enough change to really spark the orchids to do what they're supposed to do in the winter season. 
Again, I've heard a lot of people say they grow these orchids, they do really well for a couple years, and then they kind of peter out and they die a slow, terrible death. <laughs> but um, some of them die a really quick death, like mine when you get water in the crown. But I can say that I do feel like most resting plants in general, if you don't give this thing an adequate rest or the adequate seasonal change that it wants, I think it will struggle in the long run. And I don't think it will have the energy and the strength it needs to progress, especially if you leave the media too wet in the winter time, you'll lose your roots and then you're battling a rescue plant that doesn't have much reserves. So I would definitely keep that in mind when growing this. Personally, I think it grows better mounted, but again, my humidity levels in here are ridiculous. They stay about 83 to 85% all the time, up to about 90 or so at night. Um, I keep that in check with the humidifier. I'm sorry, I keep that in check with the dehumidifier, but again, um, you know, air, air movement and everything else keeps all my mounted plants happy and lets them dry and stay moist however I choose to grow them. This is not its normal resting spot. I actually have this in a better spot for filming right now over with some other plants. It normally lives right in front of the window on the shelf below the window. So I'm going to get it moved over there so you guys can see it. But I really wanted to show you guys this bloom and get a nice little chat in while we could. So I'm going to move it over here and we'll finish talking about its conditions and wrap this video up. So, like I said, this is a care collab video and I'm going to show you exactly how I care for this thing. It is right over here in front of the window next to my, actually, Dendrobium senilia, who's doing pretty well. And a few other plants. I've got the Sarcochylus up here kind of providing some shade from the actual sun itself and my pings and everything else up here getting nice high light. So definitely gets very, very bright light at all times. But in the winter time, I will move this plant over further in that direction so it will get more sun from the window. It doesn't take much, maybe a shift of about one foot over to on the other side of this uh, Dendrobium senilli here. However, it's enough. That is exactly what it wants and exactly what it needs as far as lighting is concerned in the winter time. Let's see, we've talked about feed, we've talked about environment, we've talked about everything. It's time, I guess, we need to talk about the other channels participating because I do believe I got excited and I jumped right into this thing and totally forgot. So I'm sorry, guys. There are three other channels joining me today, and I really hope that you guys choose to go check out their videos on this as well. Um, the other channels joining me are Yoshi from Plants and Other Things. I've got Trish from Trish's Orchid and Plant Life and Erica from Got Plants, who I'm new to her channel, um, just came across it through Yoshi. He invited her into this thing and I'm super happy he did because it, everybody here has a really awesome channel and we were looking for participants. It seems that not as many people grow this as we had originally thought, but um, I'm really glad to have the other people here joining us. Again, that's Trish from Trish's Orchid and Plant Life, Yoshi from Plants and Other Things, and Erica from Got Plants. Anyhow, that's my video for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Please go check out all the other Care Collab videos. And until next time, please stay safe and happy growing. See you guys.